Hello everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today is the last video of the series of how to make jeans. So we've been going step by step through making jeans and this is finally when we get to finish them. So I'm super excited because they look beautiful. They're really going beautifully and I hope yours are too. And to finish them off, you're only going to need a couple things beyond what we've talked about in the first three videos. So you'll need a set of rivets like that. And of course, these are optional, but they do look really great and they're not hard to do. So why not do it? And then what I grew up calling bachelor buttons, or maybe they're called press on buttons now, but they're little buttons like this that snap on. You'll find both the rivets and those snap on buttons in any fabric store. They're really easy to come across and they come in a variety of different metals. Today we're putting on the waistband, the belt loops, the rivets, the buttons, and the doing the final hem. Watch till the end because I'll do just a little bit of distressing so that the jeans have a little bit of a worn look right off the top. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit subscribe and hit the bell because I'm always teaching something fun and interesting here on this channel, giving you great techniques and showing you some really fun projects. If you've got your jeans mostly sewn, you've got your rivets and your button, let's finish this off. So here are the jeans, almost complete, just waiting for finishing. The waistband, which I've got halfway interfaced, or the belt loop or belt carriers as they call them in the pattern. Package like that of rivets. And then a bachelor button for the waistband. So now the instructions are saying that we're going to be starting with the waistband. I'm actually not going to start there. I'm going to come back to that after making the belt loops. So we're going to be taking this piece to the iron, fold that belt loop piece in half, try to be careful to have your edges nice and even, and then you'll open it out and you'll have that crease right down the middle and you'll fold your edges into that crease. And then you'll go back in half. On a thicker fabric like denim, it's never nice to sew a tube right sides together and then turn your tube right side out. It's just never going to look nice. With that folded into four, now we'll sew nice and close to this edge and that keeps it together, but we'll sew also close to the other edge just so it looks balanced. So the more accurately you can press this with the edges right together, the easier it is to sew. And then come back the other way on the other edge. So now the instructions say to cut them into five pieces that are four inches long each. And the reason I want to start with the belt loops is because I want to be able to tuck them into the waistband. There's our five belt carriers. So before attaching the waistband, we'll be putting the belt carrier pieces facing down. They'll end up going up like this. So if one side looks better than the other, and put the good looking side down. And I'm putting the first one right on that center back seam. And then I'll put one just inside from the pocket. I'll do that on both sides. And now I want to just place one halfway. So I'm gonna bring this front belt carrier to that back one at the center back and find where the halfway point is. Same on the other side, put the front to the back, find the middle point, and put the belt loop there. Good. So all I need to do is do a little bit of a back tack right across. So I just ran to the machine, back tacked on all five of the belt carriers. While I was there, I took the waistband piece, and on the uninterfaced edge, I just sewed a line at half inch or 1.25 centimeters from the edge. So a little less than the normal seam width, which is 5 eighths or 1.5 centimeters. And now I'm gonna be pressing it right along that edge. Sewing it first there, it's just like drawing a line to show you exactly where to fold. It's just easier than measuring your whole way across. We'll take the interfaced edge and start putting that right side together with the jeans. We want to make sure we've got seam allowance sticking out here. So about a finger width or 5 eighths, 1.5 centimeters have that sticking out. And at this point, you know the jeans fit you because you've already tried them on and made any alterations that you needed to. 
At the other end, I also want to have finger width or 1.5 centimeters sticking out, 5 eighths. The centers even, and then pin in between. Well pinned on, so now we're just going to sew at the regular seam allowance, 5 eighths or 1.5 centimeters. So the waistband is all sewn on and now I want to zip up the zipper and check here. I should be level there. If I'm not level, which I'm not, I need to figure out do I need to sew this one down or bring this one up. So this one I'm right at the top of the metal stopper, this one I'm a bit above. So I'm going to come in a little lower down here. Good. And now when I zip up and check, now I'm level. So I'm happy with that. All right, so I'm pulling these right over the end of the ironing board, making sure the seam allowance is still coming upwards. Then I want to give this edge a good press with that seam allowance going up. So this step is completed, but we've also got the, the belt loops tucked in there. So now we're on to here, we're fold waistband along fold line. That just means you're folding it down in half and stitching the ends here. So we don't really need to go back to the pattern and find where that fold line was. All I need to do is fold this so that this fold here is coming past my seam. I just want to make sure that is dipping down a little bit there because I'm going to need to be able to catch it on the next step. So as long as that is a smidge below, let's say an eighth of an inch or two or three millimeters, and now I'm just going to be able to sew right there, right beside this, on both ends in the same way. And I'll just be sewing not on the fly piece, but right beside. Just like that, on both ends. So I just want to push that into the corner, bring out my corner nice and pointy. If I'm careful, I can use closed up scissors to poke out that corner nice and pointy. On the side that shows on the fly, I just want to make sure that this edge looks nice and straight. And I also want to make sure that when I zip it, I'm nice and level here. So we're going to spend a few minutes now pinning so that we can stitch in the ditch. I don't want this to show the right. I want to push that back and get this front edge looking really sharp. Push that all back nice and sharp. And then on the inside, I want this to look good too. Let's trim that corner. Okay. To be able to stitch in the ditch now, I want to keep my seam allowance going up and I take that folded edge and just cover it. Just barely cover it. And then look, check on the outside. That should look good inside and out. And then I'm pinning right in the ditch in the ditch of the seam, but making sure to catch that inside edge. Don't rush to finish now. You want to take your time and do a nice job here. So working your way along, tucking in any yucky threads or edges, have that sitting nice on the inside, pin it from the outside in the ditch and just catching that inside edge. If I'm catching too much, I can bring it up. There, that looks about right. Pin the whole length now. Always with your pins pointing this way towards where you're going to start sewing. And then we're going to be sewing right along that ridge or in the ditch. Or you can sew in the ditch with your matching thread and then sew up on the edge here with a contrast thread. My waistband is all pinned, all of my pins pointing towards where I'm going to start, which is here. I will be going all the way around this whole waistband but I want to do it in two separate sections just so I don't get into any awkward positions. I always want the edge on my right, so I want to go on this edge first with all the pins, and then I'm going to come back the other way to do the other three edges. My belt loops are still just facing down. It'll be the next step where I sew them up. And I can feel the folded edge underneath so I know I'm catching it.
Okay, so the ridge is sewn, and now I'm going to come in this way around the whole rest of the waistband. And if these corners are getting too thick, just go ahead and hammer them. Okay, so that holds the waistband nice and flat. And I'll be giving that a press in a minute just to get rid of any rippling effect there. And now the belt carriers. If I just fold down that top edge and then place it here. Now this is getting mighty thick. I'm going to try it on my machine, but that might be where I need to break down and do some hammering. But on all the belt carriers, I'm going to be sewing back and forth here. And even though it's already sewn in that hem, I'm going to also do a, a bit there too. I'll sew it back and forth there just to keep it nice and flat. The nice bit about it extending below the waistband is that it can accommodate a wider belt. If that's not a concern for you, you could cut off quite a bit of this belt loop and just have a smaller one like that. Forward, back and forward should do the trick. Now because it's thick, your presser foot is going to try to push that belt carrier forward. So as you're starting, you're going to be wanting to push it a little bit. So these fingers are safely on the side. They are the ones who are doing the pushing. Okay, belt loops are all on. And I trimmed a little bit off of the end there so you don't see a raw fuzzy edge. They're all looking good. The buttonhole. The bachelor button that I'm going to use is going to go in the back of my buttonhole foot. Pop off the regular foot. Slide that one on. This kind of buttonhole looks good. The curved end, I like that kind of buttonhole. Especially for thick things like jackets and jeans. Let's go with that. If you're not sure how to make a buttonhole with your machine, you're going to have to look at your manual to see how that is going to work. I like to have the edge here in line with the edge of the needle plate. Right, right about there and centered on the waistband. And my hands are just here making sure it doesn't get stuck in one spot. I'll give it a little nudge if it gets stuck and then the machine will come to a complete stop when it's done the buttonhole. So now with little scissors just wiggle your way in and snip your way across. So bachelor buttons or press-on buttons come with two pieces. This one that look, looks kind of an, like a nail and then this button one. And I cannot tell you how many times my students have gone like, oh, okay, so this presses into this. They snap it together just to see and then it never separates. It's garbage then. So don't, don't do that. This is an awl and it's just going to make a hole for us. So with the zipper closed, I'm going to poke my awl in and towards the end of the of the buttonhole not in the middle because it's going to the buttonhole will always open up until it hits the button right so toward the end of that buttonhole i'm going to just poke a little hole enough to be able to get that nail part through to the other side good and then i should be able to just snap that on i might have to use a hammer here yep i have to use a hammer so there's probably a rubber disc or something that your button can fit in just to protect the surface that you're hammering on. I'm not going to worry too much about this cheap Ikea stool. So just a few whacks with the hammer and then that is on there. Really nice. And there you go. That's nice. I also snuck in a little hook and eye on the inside of the waistband just to keep the fly sitting nicely when it's on. It's time for the hem. I pinned it up until it looked good with different boots and shoes that I want to be able to wear with these jeans. And then I put a pin where I want it to finish. The other pins can come out. Put the two legs together, unless you know, some people do have one leg longer than the other and that's no problem. You can do these separately, but if your legs are the same length, 
Then what you want here is an inch and a quarter or three centimeters below the pin that's showing where you want it to finish. So now we're gonna take it to the iron, press up the full three centimeters, inch and a quarter, press that whole amount up, and then tuck in the top edge and press. So with my pant legs inside out, I'm going to turn up the full amount, the full three centimeters or inch and a quarter, press that flat, and then tuck in that raw edge. Tucking in that raw edge is really easy. Everything seems just really stable and nice and straight. It's much easier than turning twice. I'm telling you, it is the way to go. I've got the fancy thread in the bobbin, and I want to make sure I'm starting and stopping at the inseam so that the back tack is a little bit hidden because with this thick fancy thread the back tack is going to look a little bit terrible so I want it to be as hidden as possible. You might have to do some hammering at the bottom of the seams along your hem because that's a lot of layers. That back tack does look a little bit terrible but the rest of it I'm pretty happy to have that contrast thread in my bobbin. I think that looks pretty sweet. The last thing is the rivets and where I want to put them is the corner of the coin pocket, the sides of the front pockets, and maybe the sides of the back pockets. So again with my awl, I'm going to just poke a hole and then with these rivets I could have the silvery side showing or this more gunmetal side showing. And I think I'm gonna have the gunmetal side showing. This one isn't pointy the way the bachelor button is, so it's not that easy to get through. There we go. And then the little cap goes on. Start by squeezing, but I'm gonna have to hit that with the hammer for sure. Okay, a little whack with the hammer, and that's gonna be good. That looks good, hey? So the rivets just look Great. I love that so much. Can you see that? Those That just looks beautiful, right? Like nobody's going to think that you made these jeans yourself when you have these beautiful rivets in place. For distressing, sandpaper is your best friend. Anywhere you want it to look just a little less brand new, you're going to take that sandpaper and just rough it up. Especially like at the back of the hem. You could do the edge of the pocket if you want. You could even do some around the knees if you want. I'm going to keep it minimal because I'm pretty happy with the way these look. For distressing, sandpaper is pretty awesome. Okay, so my jeans are done and I love them. They feel fantastic on. I'm really happy that I can control the fit so nicely when I make my own jeans. And now that I've got the pattern, I know exactly where I want to take it in and by how much. I'll be able to make jeans again and again in different fabrics, different colors, and each time will get faster and faster. I really hope that you learned a lot in the past four videos and that those techniques helped you to also make some awesome jeans for yourself. I hope you love them, and if you do, let me know in the comments below. And if you have any questions as well. Good, so if you learned something, if you enjoyed those videos, give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe. It's really great to have you along for all of my sewing adventures. Let's see what I get up to next time. And until then, you take care.